be doing a steamed fish, a steamed surmai with nice steamed vegetables. I have got this little concoction of mine which has water at the bottom. I am going to flavor this water. So when I talk about flavoring water, I am going to be putting a half a lemon and the, some dhaniye ke roots, coriander stems and roots, sliced ginger, one piece of cinnamon or dalchini, one star, a little bit of garlic as well in this and maybe a little bit of salt. So <coughs> this is my aromatic liquid on which my fish and my vegetables will be steaming. So I've got a nice piece of surmai here which I will put it and I've got these mixed vegetables. On the bottom layer, I'm going to be putting some of this bok choy, a couple of florets of broccoli, a couple of carrots. So basically any market fresh vegetables which you like, you can put in there. Now the fish is going to cook relatively quicker than the other vegetables, okay? So what I've done is I've put fish on the topmost compartment of my steamer, just with a little bit of salt and some pepper. In about five to seven minutes, my fish will be steamed. In two minutes after that, my vegetables will be perfectly steamed. Now we need a bit of a drizzle of a sauce to go with the fish. So I've got some chopped onions, some chopped garlic, some chopped ginger and some chopped chili, a little bit of sugar, some soy sauce and juice of half a lemon. And this sauce is absolutely a concentration of great flavors. It's very easy to do. Let's have a look at our fish. Wow, that looks beautiful. It looks almost there. The fish is beautifully steamed. And if you want to know anything about good methods of cooking fish, just ask me. We have all our vegetables perfectly cooked, very nicely steamed. So you've got all the nutrition, all the color, all the flavors of the vegetables and the fish right there in that plate. Then taking a little bit of this cooking liquor, I'm going to be adding to my soya drizzle and beautifully poured over the fish. And there you go, your steamed surmai with market vegetables, my way, the healthy way. Now today's dish is not exactly a dish from Kerala, but it's inspired by Kerala. So it's a prawn dip with tapioca chips and vegetable crudities. Let's start cooking. Now I've got a little bit of coconut oil in here. We are going to add a few mustard seeds, not too many. Curry leaves into this as well. Give this a nice mix. Next, some onions. Next, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of ginger. Beautiful fresh prawns from the market. Now, I don't like to use really big prawns which you get here like the tiger or the jumbo because after all, I'm going to be blending this. Prawns gone in here. Cover it a little bit. So quickly saute off the prawns. The idea is not to overcook them at all. Next, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of turmeric powder in this a little bit of red chili powder and a little bit of black pepper a little bit of salt into this as well freshly chopped tomatoes some fresh coriander and to top it all some fresh coconut milk just about simmer it for less than a minute because by now your prawns are absolutely cooked transfer this into a pot or a bowl you can also do it inside a food processor if you like but I'm going to be doing this with my hand blender. I don't want to make it completely smooth, but I just want to make it like into a dip-like consistency. Sometimes you might have to adjust it with a little bit of water, stock, or a little bit of coconut milk and continue blending. My Kerala style prawn pate is ready. I have here some delicious vegetable crudités such as carrots, some radishes, a few nice crunchy broad beans with this as well. And not forgetting my favorite freshly made tapioca chips, which you can buy in any good store. So my Kerala style prawn pate with vegetable crudites and tapioca chips just for you. 
If you want to really learn how to make a very good Kerala style prawn pate, just ask me. Today we're doing a very nice but very very simple lobster dish. Now, as you see, these lobsters have been actually just split into two. So what you need to do is from the lobster, take the meat out, pull it away and you're left with the tail. This is what it looks like. So you cut it through it and you get these two beautiful lobster tails. If you want to know anything about lobsters, recipes, where to get them, what's to be done, just ask me. I really like to taste the lobster. What I like to do is very simple. I'm going to put these lobsters here first. So some salt, some pepper. I've got a little bit of parsley, some sliced garlic, dried red chili flakes, okay? Juice of one lemon, about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. It's a very, very classic Italian kind of way to cook your lobsters. Especially with lobster or any shellfish, you have to be careful that first of all, you don't over season it too much. And secondly, is that you do not overcook the lobsters. Otherwise, these are going to go completely mushy and that's no good. I've got a pan getting nice and hot here. So I've got my lobster tails onto this pan. The lemon juice actually cooks the fish. Pour of this way into this. I've got my lobsters still in the pan, nicely searing. You don't want to overcook them. So you just slightly color them into the pan. Nicely turn them over. Now I've got some nice fresh tomatoes going in this. I've got some beautiful basil leaves. Give this a little stir. Cover this and let the lobster cook. The tomatoes and the garlic and the basil and the olive oil have made a beautiful natural sauce as well. This is all about fresh cooking using fresh produce and just minimal additives. Beautiful lobster with some fresh basil leaves and the lobster is ready.